is a big day for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. A new church history exhibit is on display in downtown Salt Lake, featuring some of the newly acquired artifacts from the church's purchase of the historic sites in Kirtland, Ohio. And today we're seeing new video inside that newly acquired Kirtland Temple. The church's first public tours of the temple began just this morning. And we do have team coverage for you. Annika Johns is in Salt Lake live at the Church History Museum downtown. And our Sarah Murphy is in Kirtland, Ohio for us, taking the tours and meeting everyone involved there, bringing us a first look inside that temple. Nearly 200 people from Ohio to Ghana are gathering in Ohio today for the reopening of the Kirtland Temple. It's back open for the first time in nearly three weeks since the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints bought it from the community of Christ. Sarah Murphy in Kirtland now with the story. Hey, Sarah. I'm here on the steps of the Kirtland Temple. Now, some of the final tour groups of the day are inside right now. Many of them tell me they're using their spring breaks, their vacation time to be here for the reopening. We got a firsthand look inside the temple this morning before the tour started. This is the first day the Kirtland Temple's doors are open since the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints bought it from Community of Christ a few weeks ago. Church leaders say the tours today have brought strong feelings for everyone. Today is a wonderful day. It's it's a, a day of celebration for us. It's a day of remembering above all things and uh, a day of community. It has been interesting and fun to watch uh, the young people, even very young, I mean, in arms, uh, sense the significance and the spirit of this place. It's been it's been tremendous. Church missionaries tell me there's been a great turnout today. They say they expect their busiest time, though, to be in June. Reporting in Kirtland, Ohio, Sarah Murphy, ABC4 News. Okay, Sarah, thank you. We'll continue our in-depth coverage on the historic Kirtland Temple and bring you a special report that will air this Sunday at 430 right here on ABC4 News. Now to Annika Johns, who's live in Salt Lake City, reporting on the new exhibit featuring some of the recently acquired artifacts now at the Church History Museum in Salt Lake City. Annika got an inside look at what's on display and the significance behind each piece. Annika. Yes, exactly, Brian. So in an effort to, con to continue to preserve the church's rich history, they've added these new items to their brand new exhibit just behind me in this building here in the Church History Museum. Now it's featuring a couple items, including letters between Joseph Smith and his wife, Emma, the door from Liberty Jail, and a piece of paper said to contain characters that were copied from the golden plates themselves. A new glimpse into the past for the first time here in Salt Lake City. Uh, the community of Christ has done a magnificent job of, of taking care of them. It's now our turn. On March 5th, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints announced the transfer of ownership of significant historical documents and artifacts once belonging to the community of Christ that hold significant value to the church's history. And now for the first time, the church's newest museum exhibit titled Sacred History, Treasures from the Restoration of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, features over over half a dozen sacred and precious items obtained earlier this month. Uh, a lot of these documents date to the translation of the Book of Mormon, uh, the earliest periods of Latter-day Saint history, uh, the Bible Translation Project, letters Joseph wrote to Emma Smith, just real treasures um, th that have been preserved by the community of Christ. And it's now our task as a church to preserve and share those documents. Items on display include portraits of Joseph and Emma Smith painted during their lifetime that hung in Emma's homes throughout her life. Every portrait you've seen of Joseph and Emma have been um, based on these early portraits in some way. Several letters between the couple. For instance, you have this letter where Joseph's essentially saying, hey, I miss you, I love you, please write me more. And the response is, hey, I miss you and I love you. I've got a lot to do at home, Joseph. I've got kids to take care of, the house to take care of. I'll write you as much as I can. The original door of Liberty Jail, where Joseph Smith was said to have received revelation from God. You know, as we were doing research, we found a fabulous quote um, by Mary Fielding Smith and Mercy uh, Smith as well, and they talked about coming and visiting um, the men imprisoned in Liberty Jail and hearing the door hinges creak as they walked in. In a small scrap of paper titled Characters. And this is a document John Whitmer, an early 
church historian made, where he copied characters from the gold plates that Joseph Smith had transcribed. When speaking to church curators, they say these items go beyond just a historic value, but give a glimpse into the people behind the history. And having a full experience of history helps people understand um, why things happened the way they did in context, and also gives people space to connect and, and know how real uh, the restoration of the church was. While these historic individuals may seem like they're from another world, documents and items like these thin the barrier between their time and ours and show just how similar we all are from one another. Sometimes history can be like a still life where you imagine these people as being nothing like you. And when you see and read the documents they left behind, you actually realize we have far more in common with the people of the past than maybe we think. Now these items will be on display until October 26th of this year and the church says after that they will be placed into some protective storage to make sure that the authenticity and the beauty of these documents are well protected from all of the elements and human touch. Reporting live from downtown Salt Lake City, Annika Johns, ABC4 News.